Coming up on Science and Technology Week. A day at the races. It's a new intercollegiate sport and an educational challenge for engineering students. If you think engineering students are nerds with pocket protectors, whose idea of excitement is doing differential equations, well, think again. You'd be more likely to find today's future engineers zipping around a racetrack in miniature hot rods. Cars battle furiously for position on the track at Charlotte Motor Speedway. But clearly, these aren't NASCAR's powerful Fords, Chevys, and Pontiacs. And the drivers and crews aren't pros from the Winston Cup circuit. The teams that work on these cars are made up of engineering students from six universities here in the heart of stock car racing country. They're hoping this will be the dawn of a new intercollegiate sport, featuring brainy engineers rather than brawny athletes. And we're beginning of a new sport, a new educational endeavor, and a new motorsports movement. It's called NCAR, or National Collegiate Association for Racing. While the driver's skill and nerve are important, the engineering challenge is in subtle adjustments, what they call the setup. Small changes like tightening a spring here, or adding a little tire pressure there that can make the difference between winning and losing. The setup is key. I mean, if the car handles well going into a corner and coming out, that person's going to be the fastest. The cars are Legends cars, five-eighth scale models of cars from the 30s and 40s, powered with motorcycle engines. They're built to give amateur racers a level playing field, and the students aren't allowed to make major changes to the engine or chassis. We can vent the engine to uh, cool it. Uh, we can change uh, spring rates and general setup items, camber caster, uh, tow, uh, the wheelbase, uh, the rear axle offset, just uh, general stuff. I want to know if those brakes are locking up. When I... Part of setting up the car is adapting it to each driver's preferences. There's constant feedback between drivers and crews, and driving is part of the learning experience. All of these students are able to simulate on the computer the, the performance and the dynamics of this car, but the subtleties of a half a pound PSI, we can't simulate on a computer. They have to be able to feel it, and they have to be able to see it, and this is a wonderful opportunity for them to see what engineering is all about. We want to go one, one turn long, right? All the months of tinkering, planning, and practicing come down to this exhibition race. An eager driver can spin out unexpectedly, causing a chain reaction wreck. The drivers are fine, but not all the cars leave the track under their own power. In the deciding heat, luck and determination finally put the South Carolina car out in front to stay. And the champion, the University of South Carolina, the third and final leg, Trudy Fender. The idea for NCAR developed from conversations between Rogers and Charlotte Motor Speedway president, Humpy Wheeler. I've always wanted to get racing, you know, in colleges, because I think, I think it's good for the, the sport, the, the colleges, and, and, uh, and our image, really. What we're trying to do is not to focus so much on developing a workforce for motorsports, but to use motorsports to help educate students that would have a great deal of utility across all the industry. NCAR hopes to include more colleges next year and expand the racing schedule to as many as seven races at different tracks. They're hoping to attract sponsors who'd like to see their company name on the side of a college race car. I think it'll be a, be a, a significant revenue source uh, for colleges too, and it's not gonna hurt the, uh, the athletic departments, the football and basketball programs uh, as far as revenue, because this is gonna be new money coming in. And supporters point out one big advantage over traditional sports there's no worry about having your star athlete flunk out, since most of these students are at the top of their class. 